Even more huge news just dropped for Keyforge Winds of Exchange, and this time it's about how token creatures will function in this next set. It's been a source of speculation for quite some time on how token creatures will work, and this brand new article, Tis But a Token, clears up our questions. As always, I'll leave a link to the article in the description below in case you want to check it out for yourself. First off, the article confirmed that in the set there will be a total of 28 possible token creatures that a deck could end up with. It also goes on to recap how exactly a token creature is made. When instructed to make a token creature, you take the top card of your deck and place it face down in your battle line, unless a card explicitly tells you to make a token creature from somewhere else, like in the case of Space Invaders. However, now with Winds of Exchange, the backs of these cards have been reworked to actually display the token creature the face down card represents. They've been redesigned to feature the deck's token creature on the left, with the three houses in the deck bunched off to the right. The article refers us to the theoretical deck Hortensia Dame Quartz Rudder, which reveals what a WOE Archon card looks like, the backs of each card in the deck, and the reference card for that deck's token creature. In the case of Hortensia, its token creature is Grunt, so that's the token creature that shows up on the back of each card. So when you flip one over to make a token creature, it's crystal clear what that token creature is. I personally really like the new design of the card backs, leaving no room for error while simultaneously looking pretty cool in my opinion. Now, many of the questions players had regarding token creatures involved how they would act when on and off the board, and how they would interact with the board. Just like regular creatures, token creatures enter play exhausted on either flank of the player's battle line. The article provides a nice visual example of what a small battle line might look like with token creatures in the mix. The subtitles read, this example battle line shows two grunts already in play, and Groggins. When making a new token creature, the player takes the top card of his deck and puts it into play on either the left or right flank of his battle line. The newly made Grunt enters play exhausted. Pretty simple. Also, based on this visual, it looks like Groggins is confirmed to return for Winds of Exchange. The article goes on to say that token creatures behave just like normal creatures when they're in play. They can be damaged, stunned, enraged, and warded just like normal creatures, and can be used to fight or reap just like normal creatures, and can even use their action or omni ability if they happen to have one. A very interesting point the article brings up is that while a token creature is in play, you are allowed to look at its reverse side. This could be important for strategy in this set, knowing which of your cards are currently being used as token creatures, and when you may have access to them as regular cards at any point in the future. It's clarified that, of course, you can't look at upcoming cards that are still in your deck, nor can you look at the reverse sides of your opponent's token creatures. Common sense stuff, but helpful clarification to have nonetheless. When a token creature leaves play for any reason, it's treated just like a normal creature and is moved to the appropriate out-of-play zone. In most cases, such as it being destroyed, it'll go to the discard pile. But this means that token creatures can also be purged, bounced back to hand, or placed in the archives just like regular creatures. A card like Draining Touch will destroy the token creature, and it'll be sent to the discard pile, unless there's an effect out there like Biometrics Backup that sends it to the archives instead. Or if Lights Out is played, it could be put back in the hand, or Oubliette could purge it. All these interactions resolve in the same way they would for a regular creature. Another interesting point the article brings up is in this paragraph, which reads, If you take control of an opponent's card that makes token creatures, but your deck does not include its own token creature because it came from a set other than Winds of Exchange, then the make a token creature effect does nothing. In such situations, you simply follow the standard rule of do as much as you can. This is particularly notable in the cases of cards like Corner the Market, a card that was previously analyzed on this channel. It was speculated that non-WOE decks would have their own generic token creature the deck could make if it was ever instructed to do so from cards like Corner the Market, but this paragraph from the article makes it sound as if that's not the case. Players reached out to Ghost Galaxy about this and were met with this response. The concept of any Keyforge deck being able to make a generic, one power token creature that could be used as if it belonged to the active house was part of an earlier design for Winds of Exchange. FFG did playtest this concept, but when Ghost Galaxy assumed control of Keyforge, the Winds of Exchange card pool and its accompanying rules set were not in its final form. Ghost Galaxy is finishing the design and development process on Winds of Exchange started by FFG, and finishing that work involves making changes to the set we feel are necessary to make the product excellent. Some cards, such as Corner of the Market, are being reworked. So there it is, Corner of the Market probably won't be functioning in quite the same way as it was previously revealed, and the concept of generic token creatures for non-WOE decks appears to have been scrapped. The second half of the article details how exactly token creatures are chosen for decks as they're generated. 
I won't cover this all too much. If you want to read about the full process, once again, the link will be in the description. But a notable point is that the selection of which house the token creature will belong to for any given deck is weighted towards the house in the deck that has the most effects related to token creatures. Play and strategy wise, this is an interesting tidbit of information. In addition to implying that if a deck doesn't have any cards that relate to token creatures, perhaps there will be Winds of Exchange decks out there that do not have a token creature, since there would be no cards in that deck to make them or interact with them. Just as you can find Mass Mutation decks with no enhancements, and Dark Tidings decks with no tide interaction, perhaps there will be Winds of Exchange decks with no token creature. But that's all just speculation. The article also included a few new spoilers alongside all this information. In Star Alliance, we have the new common action card Photon Blast, reading Play. Deal 2 damage to a creature with 1 damage splash. If this damage destroys one or more creatures, make a token creature. It's another card that makes token creatures, this time with damage involved. The direct damage is nice to have, and rewards you with a token creature when the damage is used to destroy something. I feel like this card could have been better with an Ember Pip, but it's still neat nevertheless. Another spoiled card is the new Brobnar uncommon action Brawl In. It reads Play, make two token creatures, and rage them. It's an extremely simple card that lets you make two token creatures at no cost, with that added in rage for the Brobnar flavor. Again, I think this card would have been better with an Ember Pit, it seems really weird that it wouldn't have one, and hopefully that weirdness is not a trend we see as more WOE Brobnar cards are revealed. The last spoiler is an uncommon artifact from House Mars, Nyon Outpost. It reads, Action, put a friendly creature on the bottom of its owner's deck. If you do, make two token creatures. Another token creature generator, this one with a little more strategy involved. This is also the second outpost we've had revealed to us, with the first being Broken Axe Outpost from Brobnar, spoiled quite some time ago. Perhaps each house will have its own outpost, and if so, that would be pretty neat. Be sure to check out the article for yourself on the new Keyforge website. It's exciting to finally have some news and clarification on the rules of how exactly token creatures work. Be sure to let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you all again in the next one. See you later.